Hi, I'm Jennifer from the Worcester branch of the Wayne County Public Library, and welcome to Tuesday Crafternoon. Since May is Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to show you a crafting project that can be used when you need to take a break from the world, calm your mind, and find a little peace. What I have here is a finger labyrinth. And what you do with this is to trace your finger around the circuits while you say or think a short phrase, prayer, or mantra to help you slow your breathing and relax. Now, the labyrinth in general goes all the way back to Greek mythology. And you can think of it as a human scale maze that has only one path to the center. The labyrinth has developed over time from something that traps malevolent spirits to a spiritual practice, sort of like a small-scale pilgrimage, in which you walk the path into the center and then out again while meditating or praying. You can most often find labyrinths on the floor of some cathedrals, but you can also find labyrinths cut into meadows or turf, laid into brick or stone, or printed on a large floor covering. Now this finger labyrinth makes the practice a little more accessible to you, both in having it handy without having to go somewhere and in taking less time for you to travel all the circuits of the labyrinth since they're so much smaller in this format. I'm going to show you my version, which includes embroidery and a little bit of quilting, but you can also create the circuits of the labyrinth by maybe applying bias strips to fabric or by drawing or painting on paper or canvas. It's up to you. Now, to create a finger labyrinth, you'll first want to find a design that you like. I found this one by searching on Google for images of labyrinths, printed out a picture, enlarged it to the size that I wanted, and then thickened the lines so that I could see it better when I was trying to copy the pattern to fabric. Now, you'll also need a piece of fabric that will cover this design and give you a little bit of room at the edge for seam allowances. Um, I use a micron, Pigma Micron marker to draw on the fabric, but you could probably also use a ballpoint pen. Um, you're going to be stitching over it, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. I like to use washi tape to tape it, tape the pattern up on a window so that I get light behind it, and then use the washi tape to tape the fabric over it so that I can do the tracing. When I'm ready to do the stitching then, I have embroidery floss and needle, scissors, and an embroidery hoop. So, let's get started. So as you can see, I've got the pattern taped to the window and the fabric taped over it. So now, I just need to trace all the lines. So since I've got the design traced onto my fabric, I want to go ahead and add the embroidery hoop, get my floss and needle ready. And then what I'm going to do here, and this might be kind of hard to see, is I'm doing a kind of chain stitch around here just to make it a little bit thicker. The reason I want to do this twisted chain is because I like to use three strands of floss, and I usually do two strands of one shade 
and one strand of a lighter shade so that as the floss twists in the stitches, it actually sparkles a little bit. So I've got my floss, floss threaded and knotted at the end. And so I'm just going to start here in the center. Actually, I need to reset that. Okay, so I've come up at one point and I'm going to pull the floss to one side and I go in right at about the same point Push my needle through a little bit further down. I don't know how well this is going to focus. Sorry. But then I'll just pull it through. And we have the first loop in the chain. And again, I'll just pull that floss to the side, put in my needle at the bottom of that loop, come up a little ways on down the line, and pull it through. I'll do that once more. And make sure that you're getting your needle behind the floss, even though it's pulled to the side, you want to be behind it and then come up in front of it like that. That's what gives it the little bit of twist. So really, that's all I'm doing all the way around all of these circles in the labyrinth. Once you're done with that then, what I usually do is treat this like a little quilt. And so I will put in a thin layer of batting behind this stitched part, and then a different piece of fabric on the back, and sandwich them together with pins or with basting. And you can do this in different ways. On this one, I've just quilted around the center circle and around the outside, but you might want to quilt your little path through all the circuits. You can do that as well. And then like with any other quilt, you finish it off with binding, however you want to do it. And you've got something that you can fold up, tuck away, use maybe as the, the top on a table or something. So it's handy for you whenever you want to take a few minutes and just follow your path through the labyrinth. Now, if you wanted to do this with your bias strips, you're going to want your labyrinth to be bigger so that they're not you know, right next to each other because this is a fairly small finger labyrinth. Anyway, that's how I make a finger labyrinth. And I've made a few of these for friends who have found them useful in meditation or in calming their minds. So I hope this inspires you to make one for yourself, whether you use embroidery and quilting as I've done, or you decide to unleash your creativity in other ways. Just find what's right for you. In the meantime, I hope you stay healthy, be kind, and get creative. Bye. 